Waziri, um, my colleagues, uh, governors, deputy governors, UN representatives, uh, all of our partners, and every um, invited guest present here this morning. Let me say that um, I am uh, very happy to be here this morning to discuss this very important um, topic, resilience building in ASAL uh, counties. <clears throat> um, let me first of all um, salute the great people of Kenya for making it possible for devolution to take effect. Because if it were not for devolution that has taken root in the country, such kind of a wonderful consultative forum will not have happened in a place like this, Garissa, in northern Kenya for that matter. It is only possible because devolution has worked, it has happened, now we have counties, and, and the counties can govern uh, themselves. For that, I want to sincerely thank the great people of Kenya, because they made a decision in 2010 to pave way for such kind of uh, a historic thing to happen. Following that historic decision, much has happened. People may not realize, people may not acknowledge. We may just be talking about the negatives, the challenges, and these kind of things, but it's good also to appreciate <clears throat> where we are. Knowing what Northern Kenya and ASALs generally have been going through uh, is a major, major shift. It's a major shift. We thank the people and, and, and the government of Kenya for that matter again. Because today, all these governors seated here uh, with their people in their respective counties, a number of transformative programs have taken root, despite the fact that we always have got emergencies, emergencies when it is uh, dry and uh, droughts have, have been uh, serious in our regions, it's an emergency. When it rains and heavy rainfalls fall, though for a short period, it's an emergency. Uh, though we have these emergencies, we have a lot of things to show for the, the 10 years that uh, governors have been in office. If you look around, counties have built medical training colleges. They have built hospitals, maternities, dispensaries, you know, call it or name them. Too many projects. There are tarmac uh, which has been done in these arid and semi-arid counties. If you sample around, you know, never thought of before. Uh, it used to be that whoever is at the helm of the nation, <clears throat> whatever he decides, something little might happen in one of the Asal counties. But now every other county is in charge of their own programs. We have robust scholarship programs where um, bright but needy students who otherwise will have missed out of schools are getting opportunities. Uh, kidney dialysis is going on in many of these counties because of the decision that we made. And, and, and so we have a lot that has happened. Unfortunately, climatic conditions in those regions are not very favorable, as all of us know. Um, it's not anybody's making. Unfortunately, it's not very conducive because we have many, many months of dry spell. And because of the historical marginalization, government policies have not helped before. And this is what we are talking about, building resilience in some of those areas. The drought which everybody has been talking about, which just ended a few months ago, took a toll on us. It is swept all our earthly possessions, and our possessions in northern Kenya and Assals, as everybody here knows, is livestock, because we are pastoral in nature. And the same drought threatened the lives 
of human beings. We had to suspend development programs to ensure that we save lives. That is what it means. We save lives. And some people around talk of, oh, where to development, one near people. Have... People are very busy ensuring that no life is lost. And, and some of them lose sight of that. So when we talk of resilience building, we are talking of what structures are we going to put in place so that in time to come in future, uh, it's not the same story every other day that a drought coming, then the same problem, the same danger, the same challenge. Heavy downpour falls, the same problem, the same, you know. When I was coming in, I was a bit worried. Are we talking just too much every other time, resilience building, resilience building, with, uh, you know, uh, little to show for? But when I saw the closing remarks, uh, both from the CS and even from, from the UN country coordinator, where he announced also that they are thinking of major programs that they are going to jointly undertake. You know, uh, you are speaking to my heart. Because why should we keep on talking, talking? We know these things. We know what we want to do. It's a question of, are we able to do it? Uh, the, 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 the funding counties gate are barely enough to pay the salaries, the wages, the, you know, recurrent expenditure, and the small, small other things of priority. Uh, if you asked me, I will be able to tell you, do one, two, three, and, and our problem is over. And governors, my colleagues seated here, and everybody else will agree with me. The problem in northern Kenya, in the Asals, if you solve the major problem which will bring a solution, will be that of water. Number one. Number two, water. Waziri, number three, also water. Nothing else. Nothing else. If your ministry was empowered and you do together with the, the water ministry and give us large dams, the ones we hear of, you know, 50 billion, where 70 billion, we don't even need those big, huge ones. Two, three billion is enough to transform Garissa, to transform Mandera, you know, it's enough. That is the kind of thing we need. Then we teach our people, we already we've been talking about irrigation and this on some small scale, we've been doing it. That will be called, is what we can call resilience building. Otherwise, when we come to a conference hall every day talking about resilience building with no action, it won't help us, we will not move. So I'm happy that is the direction our partners are taking and we want to encourage you, honestly, let us be uh, action oriented let us choose or select impactful programs as opposed to these little, little things we keep doing, which we may not be able to enumerate and account for, so that in future we can say, yes, this dam, medium-sized dam, is helping this location, uh, which, of course, in turn, is helping people irrigate their land and they are producing food and they can water the animals. It's something to show for. I think that way we will be able to make good progress. Finally, ourselves, and here I'm talking to the Garissa people and the, all the Asal communities, we have to be serious ourselves. Even as leaders, we need to have cons conversations between ourselves, right? And probably we'll organize as FCDC to have a discussion because there are a number of issues we need to talk. Sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot uh, without knowing. These are a lot elaborate, but we'll discuss with the governors. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much and God bless you.